You're listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. Thanks to Concordia University, Wisconsin, for your support of The Coffee Hour. Find out more about Concordia University, Wisconsin at cuw.edu. Live uncommon. Call day is right around the corner. But what is call day and what does that mean for um, for seminary students, their families, and for calling congregations as well? Joining us today from Concordia Seminary in St. Louis, the Reverend Dr. Glenn Nielsen. He's pre- professor of practical theology, director of placement, and director of vicarage and deaconess internships as well. Dr. Nielsen, thanks for being our guest on the Coffee Hour. I'm glad to be here. So share with us, uh, who, for those who might not be familiar with Call Day, it's, it's, it's a big deal. It's a, mm-hmm. it's a big event at Concordia Seminary here in St. Louis. Why is it a special day for the seminary community? Call Day culminates uh, the student's preparation for the pastoral office or the diaconal office. Uh, on Call Day, they find out where they are going for their first call or for vicarage or for deaconess internship or their deaconess placement. Uh, It's pretty much unknown for most of them until this day, so it's approached with great eagerness, anxiety, excitement, but they will find out just where they're going to be serving in the church. You mentioned mentioned vicarages and first calls and and deaconess internships. What are the differences between those different types of of assignments that that these uh, people at Call Day will, will receive? Uh, We'll start with the vicarages. Uh, Usually after two years of seminary classes, a student will go out for a one-year vicarage or internship. That's what more people would know it as, a student pastor. And then for our Master Divinity students, they return to the seminary for a fourth year of classes. Deaconesses have a one-year internship, and then they are ready for placement after their two years of study. Call day is for those students who have finished their program of study that they will be serving as pastors or deaconesses. And so a Master of Divinity student will have done two years of classes, a year of vicarage, a final year of classes, and now will be receiving a call. Then we have students in our distance education program, such as the Ethnic Institute Immigrant Institute of Theology or Center for Hispanic Studies or uh, Cross-Cultural Ministry Center uh, or those who are alternate route students at the seminary, uh, those students will have done their vicarage and will go straight into a call. So we have a variety of programs, but call day is the big day in which they find out whether they're going, where they're going on vicarage or internship or for their first placement. So what does a student, you, you, you gave us a, a, a little picture there of what students, particularly talking about Master of Divinity students, what they need to do to prepare to be a candidate for a call. That's a lot. That is what, uh, about four years for those who are going that traditional route of the Master of Divinity program. Um, what does that look like? What, is, what happens in those four years of, of study and preparation and formation? Uh, At Concordia Seminary in St. Louis, uh, students begin with a variety of classes, uh, emphasizing studying the scriptures in the original language, uh, learning our theology, particularly our confessions from the uh, Book of Concord, uh, looking at a church history, particularly Reformation, and then uh, practical courses on preaching and teaching and counseling and pastoral care. So all of those are being done in that second year plus residential field education at a local congregation here in the St. Louis area, usually about 10 hours a week on Sundays and one time during the week. Plus we do some work with institutional modules and uh, cross-cultural modules for the students. So we try to prepare them as much as possible for that year of vicarage where they are assigned to a congregation for one year, working with a pastor, and then they get to do all the activities of, a, of the ministry under the mentorship of a supervising pastor uh, who teaches them, mentors them, watches them, gives them lots of different experiences. Then when they come back for their final year, they take a variety of elective classes, leadership, preaching, uh, just to prepare them for that entrance into the pastoral office. 
all of these things are our great education and experience uh, to to have new pastors out into the field. What are some of the the things that these pastors and their family, or the these students and their families, um, go through in order to be prepared to go out to congregations, either for vicarage or or as a as a first call, um, being away from the seminary then in, in those ventures? Uh, well. I'll just talk about my office with Vicarage and with placement. Uh, throughout the year, we have a variety of what's called workshops, uh, and that helps them prepare for the Vicarage year on financial matters and uh, youth ministry, uh, how to relate with a supervising pastor, uh, and then the classes themselves. And then we have a mentoring program. Uh, where our students work with uh, one of our professors who helps them in what we consider the wheel of, of uh, health, health wellness, uh, areas such as finances, uh, physical health, uh, spiritual health, uh, emotional health, uh, taking care of one's physical body. Uh, so we try to prepare a student for the, uh, the whole student, the whole person, to get them ready for this vicarage year. That then continues through uh, the fourth year after the return to the seminary. Through all four years, we do language labs to help them uh, maintain their skills in the Greek and the Hebrew. Uh, so it is a fairly comprehensive, full, whole person program that tries to touch on all areas of a person's life. So when they enter in the ministry, it's not just that they have... Uh, theology and knowledge of the scripture, uh, but that they know who they are and then how they're able to minister to people uh, as they enter into the ministry. After they enter a congregation as a pastor, uh, the uh, Missouri Synod does have a program called PALS, Post-Seminary Applied Learning and Support, so that even after they leave, all the, the support for this new candidate uh, continues on, so they're not just thrown out there by themselves. Why is call day significant also for congregations, not just the, the students' uh, candidates, but also for congregations? Uh, I'm going to talk about two uh, types of calls that we often receive uh, for somebody to become a pastor. Uh, the first one is the one most people are familiar with. It's a congregation. Uh, they're without a pastor. It's a vacant situation, perhaps a little bit smaller congregation. Uh, and they have been waiting for a pastor. Maybe they tried to call a pastor from the field, but uh, have did not receive a, a pastor from the field. So they've turned to the seminary to get a new graduate. And for a congregation, then, this is... Uh, the opportunity for them to receive someone. And in that case, usually they don't know who it is. So it's going to be a surprise for them as well. But they are going to welcome them with uh, open arms because they'll be the new pastor, young, uh, energetic, and ready to go. The second type of congregation is a larger church. They're looking to call an associate pastor or an assistant pastor, somebody for the team. There's already a senior pastor in place. And so for those congregations, uh, here's a pastor that's probably got lots going on because of the larger congregation, and they're looking for the assistant to come in and, uh, once again, to start picking up areas of ministry that, that might not have had the attention of a, a leader like a pastor over the last couple years or uh, to provide uh, additional opportunities for preaching or youth or outreach, whatever the case may be, those congregations uh, have most often interviewed four or five students by their call committee and the senior pastor, and they have designated maybe two, three of those students. And so they're not sure which one they're going to get either, but they are looking forward to one of those students to come in and join the life of the congregation and, and hit the ground running. Uh, so congregations are excited. They're waiting. They're eager to receive this candidate so that their ministry can go forward with that kind of pastoral leadership. Mm -hmm. 
How are these first calls that uh, seminarians receive on call day, how are they different from calls that pastors may receive later in their pastoral vocation? Uh, the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, uh, in for the first call, uh, has a very specific procedure, uh, protocol. Uh, a student that comes out of the seminary is recommended by the director of placement for either one of the two seminaries uh, to the district president of that particular district where the congregation is located. And that district president says, yes, that student looks good for this particular congregation. Then uh, on the weekend before call day, uh, which is uh, April 24th this year, the, the whole Council of Presidents uh, meets together. Uh, they read all the names of these candidates, uh, where they are slotted to be placed, and votes on them. And that's the Board of Assignments for the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, the Council of Presidents. So first call is through the Council of Presidents uh, with the assistance of the Director of Placement. Once a, con uh, once a, a, a pastor is out in the field for a number of years, congregations can call them directly. So uh, our congregation here in St. Louis, Timothy Lutheran, uh, our senior pastor retired, and we called a pastor directly from New Jersey to come and be our senior pastor. We didn't have to go through the council of presidents or the seminary. So first call is through the Council of Presidents, working with the seminary placement. And then after that, a pastor can receive a call from any congregation. Dr. Nielsen, when is call day this year and how can we follow along? How can we participate? Well, the call day this year for St. Louis will be on Wednesday, April 28th. Uh, our Vicarage and Deaconess Internship Assignment occurs at 3 o'clock in the afternoon central time. Uh, the call day for pastors and, and deaconesses who are entering the diaconal ministry, that will be at 7 p.m. on Wednesday, April 28th. This year we have COVID restrictions, and so uh, the chapel will not be full. Uh, our county, St. Louis County, still has pretty significant uh, restrictions for how many people can be in a uh, a building at one time. So our students will be allowed one guest, then we'll have faculty and staff and council of presidents and presidents and vice president and vice president of synod there. That means many people will need to watch online. Uh, to watch our call services or vicarage service, uh, go to our webpage, uh, www.csl.edu, CSL Concordia St. Louis, that's what it stands for, but www.csl.edu. And uh, at the top of the page, you'll see a, a little spot that says call day. And just click on call day, and that'll take you to the link for the live service. It'll take you to the programs that are going to be used during the service. Uh, so we will live stream it while at the same time the service is going on. Very good. Our guest today, the Reverend Dr. Glenn Nielsen of Concordia Seminary in St. Louis. Thank you so much for being our guest on The Coffee Hour. Oh, I was uh, happy to do so. You're listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. Oh,